Hey everyone, welcome to Keto and Crime. Uh, today I have a, kind of a breakdown and reaction to Garth Daybell's testimony. I think of all the testimony we heard, the testimony of the Daybell children was the most controversial. I did Emma's last week. Thank you. That reception was just huge. Um, I do want to address a couple of comments I got. I'll do that in just a second. But um, So I'm going to go ahead and do Garth's. And then next week, I have a very special wrap-up of the Daybell trial with my good friend Annette over at True Crime, Faith, and Chocolate. So if you're not unaware of her, uh, you'll definitely get to meet her next week on my next video. And she runs a wonderful channel, and we had a very good discussion, I think, to kind of wrap up the Daybell trial. Following that... I am going to do one more uh, Daybell video where I'm going to address the very smug uh, mug shot that he got when he was checked into the maximum security uh, men's correctional facility near Boise. Uh, yeah, he was very, very smug. I'll drop that picture right here. So I am going to address that along with a deep dive into what to expect in the coming months. For, for Chad Daybell, um, it is law in Idaho that he automatically gets an appeal to the Idaho Supreme Court. So he's technically not on death row yet, but he is in the maximum security prison and will probably be in solitary confinement at least until that one appeal is is concluded. And then he still has his own appeal, so it could still be years before we have a full resolution. But I am going to deep dive into what the life of a death row inmate in Idaho will be like in that following video. And then after that, I'm going to return to regularly scheduled programming and dive back into dark history and other true crime cases and horror movie reviews as well. So I have some great, interesting stuff coming up. And with that being said, I do want to address um, a couple of comments I got about how I was being too harsh on Emma and Emma is a victim in this case because her mother was killed and I have no right to call her liar, liar, pants on fire. I got a few comments about that, not many, but I do want to address it. I am not without empathy. I am a Christian, a newly reconverted Christian, as a matter of fact. So I do have empathy and I have sympathy. And I'm not just picking a rent. I'm not victim shaming here. It was framed in a way that I'm almost victim shaming. I'm not victim shaming when it comes to Emma Daybell Murray. I am pointing out what she's obviously doing. Yes, she is a victim because her mother was murdered, but yet she is protecting the person that obviously murdered her mother, and she's obviously brainwashed due to the transition she's made from Tammy to Lori physically. She, she is so knee-deep in this cult that, yes, she is liar, liar, pants on fire. She has bought this hoot lion sinker. I don't think she has any remorse. She's completely ap apathetic when it comes to her mother. And so, yes, if you want to call her a victim because her mother was murdered, then yeah, she is a victim. But even her own family said that their relationship with her is forever damaged. They hope to repair it, and I hope they do. I hope she wakes up one day, is out of this trance that her father has her in and comes around and then i will say hey we've had a great redemption arc here but right now as i see it no she's as culpable as daybell is uh for the for the death of her mother the fact that she's protecting him now i i, I do have more sympathy for garth i think garth garth is comes off as very weak and i'm not saying that and like you know he's a beta cut cold or anything like that don't put political into it i'm just saying he's very weak willed and i think he's very culpable to the type of brainwashing that emma has already been sucked into and i think he's halfway there but i don't i think he has regret i think deep down he feels bad and he has regret and the inkling of the truth is trying to come out in ways that makes him seem to the rest of us that he's a liar because he's already been brought up 
you know, potentially brought up on perjury charges for lying. He told two different versions of Tammy's uh, death story uh, in this testimony we're about to review. So, yes, I think he's waning. I, even though I think he's a liar, I think he's waning, and I think we will see a redemption arc from Garth. And I really believe the other three children, Mark, Seth, and Leah, the reason they've remained quiet, either they're totally beaten down by Emma, who's probably the alpha dog of this of these children, or they are not wanting to, they do feel bad for what happened. They're mourning their mother and they're not going to protect their father. So I hope it's the latter, but I think maybe it's probably that they're beaten down by the stronger dogs in the pack. But anyway, we may never know. I don't want to offer a whole lot of conjecture, but I think it's either that or the fact that they're they're unwilling to publicly protect their father or defend their father. Anyway, I'm going to jump into this testimony, give you a really brief reaction. Let's dive in. It's amazing how much he looks like Chad. I mean, he is a miniature Chad. Thank you. All right. Uh, you can go ahead and inquire. Would you state your name and spell your last name for the record for me, please? Uh, Garth Daybell, D-A-Y-B-E-L-L. -L. And, and Garth, Sounds like Chad uh, can you too. tell me what your relationship is uh, to Chad over there to my left? Chad is my father. Okay, and can you tell me how many brothers and sisters you have? I have four brothers and sisters. I'm the oldest, and then um, two brothers, two sisters. Okay. Now, um, I want to uh, start out by saying that at the time your um, mother had passed away, and if at any time, Garth, you need to take a break or have a drink of water, please tell me, okay? And I think the fact that prior kind of realized where Emma came off very, very apathetic, even though he threw in, if you need to stop, if you need a tissue, knowing that she did not need a tissue, I think he's trying to throw that off into Garth's testimony as well. Hey, these children are victims. They really miss their mother, yet they don't believe their father did it. So I think that's just theatrics. Mother passed away. Who was uh, living in your dad and mom's home? So in my um, parents' home, it was my dad, my mom, and me. Okay. And in terms of the sleeping arrangements, uh, how were the, the bedroom, bedrooms aligned in that house? So at the end of a hallway, there was, um, on the left would have been my bedroom, and on the right across the hall would have been my parents' bedroom. Okay. And if you were to estimate, and you only have to estimate, it doesn't have to be scientific, how far would you estimate is the distance between the bed you were sleeping in in the one bedroom and the bed that your mother and father shared in terms of feet? So I would estimate about 20 feet between the two beds. Okay. Now I'm going to switch around a little bit and go on a couple of other different topics. So please bear with me. Okay. There's a, there is a method to this madness, I guess, but uh, um, do you have a recollection? Uh, and I want to say prior to 2000, not John Pryor, but prior to 2017. Don't get me started. Uh, who was driving the Dodge Dakota? Prior to 2017 was my dad. Okay. And then after 2017, was your dad still driving the Dodge Dakota? He was not. Okay. You're sure about that? I am sure. Okay. And this is in complete, utter contradiction to what Emma said. Emma said that they were co-drivers of both vehicles, which, married couple, yes, you are. But she said that her dad was still the primary uh, driver of the Dakota. Uh, and he's saying that his mom was, which really cements and kind of puts a pickaxe through Pryor's whole assertion that Chad was the target of the gunman on October 9th, 2019. Who was driving the Dodge Dakota? It'd be my mom. Okay. Okay. And she was primarily the one driving that? Oh, I think I have it backwards. Well, that's what I want to ask you, and I want to make sure. And there you have it, a known liar. He just told the truth, and now he's going to backtrack and fix it with a lie. that you're being accurate about this. So prior, and, and, and I, maybe I confused you by doing that. At the time of your mother's death, do you know which vehicle your dad was driving? My dad was driving the Dodge Dakota. 
And this, I will again say, liar, liar, pants on fire. This is not victim blaming. This is reacting to the situation at hand. He just told the truth, and now he's going to backtrack and lie for his father. Okay. And is there a reason why you got, are you, are you nervous? I am. Okay. Okay. Do you share your father's um, introvert personality? I do. I consider myself pretty shy okay shy and introvert are not the same thing can we stop the two shy is shy introvert is introvert two totally different things so uh at the time and i'm going to go back and this is before prior meaning before 2017 again do you know who was driving the dodge dakota so before 2017, um, it would have been my mom. Okay. And then do you have a reason as to why that changed? Do you recall? If I recall, it had something to do with a, with car troubles. Okay. And then your mother started driving a different vehicle. Um, she started driving an Equinox. Okay. If this is a cult in the true sense of like the Branch Davidians were a cult, he's going to get beaten tonight with belts because he screwed up and he told the truth on the stand. And was that her primary vehicle? Um, after when? 2017, yes. Okay. But there were... He went off script, y'all. He went off Pryor's script for their testimony. And he told the truth. Which leads me to believe there's hope for Garth but he's already been called out on several lies in the past. So I don't see how you can take any of his testimony with anything, but the biggest grain of salt. Occasions when they switched off. Is that correct? Yes. Okay. But primarily your father would be the one seen in the Dodge Dakota, correct? Correct. Okay. Okay. Now, um, I want to talk about the summer of 2019. And in regards to raccoons, what do you recall about that summer in regards to raccoons? That summer, um, I was testing out a new tent and I, out in the back field and I heard a rustling and I went out and I um, looked up into the tree and there was a raccoon there. And so I ran inside and I told my dad, there's a raccoon. Um, and it was very close to where our rabbits were being kept. And so I, um, I told him and, uh, we went out, he grabbed the shotgun and he shot the raccoon. And was that in the evening? Was that during the day? When was that? I mean, it was about 10 at night. I love stories about raccoons and tents, but no one's denying that there is not a robust raccoon population in Idaho, in East Idaho. No one's denying that. I'm sure raccoons were shot in the course of the making of this life, but we're not talking about raccoons not being indigenous to the area. They're talking about a raccoon being shot on the day that we suspect Tylee was killed and buried. That's the whole thing. It's not that raccoons don't exist or that raccoons have never been shot on the Daybell property. And also I think very telling that they raise rabbits. Uh, a lot of prepper families do raise rabbits and nothing wrong with that. I think prepper, a lot of prepper families have a lot of things right. I, myself, we make it a point to have, you know, three to six months of shelf stable food available at any time for whatever disaster. But a lot of true, you know, prepper families that really believe in like the imminent collapse of society, they raise rabbits because they multiply faster. You can, but there's fur, there's meat. They're a lot more economical source of meat than let's say chickens. So, and they multiply very fast. So I think it's tail. I, I think it's interesting that they raise rabbits, but anyway. Right. Okay. So an evening. Yeah. Okay. Was it exclusive that you would only see raccoons at night or were there occasions when you would see them in the morning or the afternoon? Um, I saw them at night, except for when we had uh, trapped them. Okay. And you had trapped them during the day. Mm -hmm. when they because raccoons are nocturnal animals and the fact that this one was just out booga doing the electric boogaloo on a fence is what's suspect they were raiding your 
what were they raiding? Uh, the rabbit hutch, or it was a rabbit pen. We had set up a fence. Okay, so they would come in during the day to uh, go after your rabbit food or rabbits? Uh, the food, and we were worried they would go after the rabbits eventually too. Okay. Did you have an occasion to cut, catch other raccoons at, during the summer of 2019? Uh, we did. How many other raccoons did you catch during the summer of 2019? Um, it was three or four, if I remember. And do you have a recollection of approximately where on the property those were buried? Um, we typically buried them in the compost heap behind the silver shed. Okay. Were there other animals that were bar buried in a different place on the property? Uh, yes. And where would those other animals be buried? Um, animals that were more of pets, we would bury um, out near a raspberry patch. Okay. So it would be unusual for you. And that would be the pet cemetery. But what's odd in that very text that Chad Daybell sent Tammy on September 9th, 2019, he spoke of burying the raccoon that he shot in the pet cemetery. And what was found? in the pet cemetery, Tylee. Your father to put a raccoon in the raspberry patch then, would that be fair? Yes. Okay, so would he typically tell his, your mother if he did something like that? Yes. Okay. And you see what he's trying to do? Just it, the reason that she even told him this is because he buried it in the pet cemetery instead of over by the shed. So. Was the, was the silver, and what did you call it, the, the behind the what? silver shed the silver shed was that getting full at some point um the shed was pretty or you mean the the ground around the shed is where you were putting them in the compost um i would think so there was a few animals in there why did he just burn it he was burning branches just throw the raccoon's body and burn it it's not a pet it's just odd that it was suddenly end up in the pet cemetery that's what i'm saying I'm going to fast forward a little bit uh, and get to the testimony from the night Tammy died, because to me, that is the most telling part of this testimony. So one moment. Okay. I, I want to talk to you a little bit about the evening of um, October 18th. Okay. And that was the evening before your mother passed. Yes. Okay. Um, you were working that day and you mentioned something about in October, you were working at a, 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 do a scare what? So there's a local haunted house in Teton, Idaho, which is about 20 ish, maybe half an hour um, away from where. I this has nothing to do with anything, but has anyone else found it funny that Garth was being paid as an actor at a haunt? which ties in with Halloween, horror movies, goblins, ghouls. But yet they were a family that believed that people can be possessed by demonic spirits and go dark and need to be killed to free themselves of those demonic spirits. And yet they didn't seem to have any problem with their oldest son who's living with them, working at a haunt. Something, either they don't really believe what they're saying or... They do, but then they don't, and deep in their heart, they know it's horseshit, but just really weird. I lived in um, a seasonal attraction that I would go work. I'm dressed up in a costume to scare people. Okay. And at that point, um, did you have an occasion uh, before going in to do that to, to come home? Uh, come home from? From your first job? Yes. And, and talk, walk me through that as to what, after you got home from work from the first job, what did you do next? So I came home and um, mom usually came home before me, if I remember correctly. Okay. And um, she told me, I just don't feel good today. Um, can we, I don't want to cook tonight. Can you go get some McDonald's for us? Now that's a long way to a McDonald's, is it not? Uh. Well, I mean, we're used to driving into town for various things. So well, then what town did you drive to for the McDonald's? Uh, Rexburg. Okay. And and forgive me, I don't recall if there is a McDonald's in Rexburg. There's two. Oh. <laughs> okay. Ben, uh, did you get some sure food for you that. folks? And I'm fat too. I know where all the restaurants are. So so. I bought food for me and my father and my mother. 
Hey, do you recall what you got for your mother? Um, her favorite meal was the quarter pounder with cheese. A healthy meal. Prior, go sit on a tack. This is just so disrespectful to Tammy. Tammy worked all day teaching her classes, helping students in the library and the computer lab. She was helping set up for a book fair. She went to her exercise class and then, oh, I just really don't feel like cooking tonight. Seems like a normal reaction from anyone when she's the primary breadwinner of this house. I mean, Garth did work, so I'm sure he paid rent or helped with the bills or something. But the only person in this household not working is Chad. And so she's coming home. She's probably dealing with things with the publishing company. And she just doesn't feel like cooking. Seems a normal reaction, a normal thing. And then to have prior comment on the fact that this woman who is in good shape, very physically active, wants a quarter pounder, wants a double quarter pounder with cheese, and he's going to comment on the health or not health of that. It just pisses me off. Depends. <laughs> and anything else? Um, I don't remember if she wanted anything else with it and fries okay yeah i feel like i got her a combo and then you went to um work at the haunted mill is that what that's called yep so i um so about seven ish i left and she was sitting on the couch and said have a fun time we'll see you tomorrow i'll let you sleep in okay and then at some point you got home at about what time so I got home about uh, 1 a.m. shortly after that. Okay. And then at that point, again, you previously testified the distance between your bedroom and your mother and father's bedroom. Is that right? Yes. And the distance there was about how far? About 20 feet. Okay. And then at some point, did you hear anything coming from your mother and father's bedroom? Um, as I passed their bedroom, I heard my father snoring. And is it clear that it was your father snoring? Yes. Okay. You had no other indication of that your mother was snoring or making any noise? I didn't hear anything of that sort. You didn't see any images in the bedroom of any kind of a struggle or a fight or any kind of an altercation, did you? No, as far as I knew, it was a normal night. Okay. And then at some point, um, what did you do after you went into your bedroom? Um, I got on my computer and I watched YouTube for a few hours. And what, when you say a few hours, what does that mean? Until uh, about 3 a.m., so okay. two hours-ish. Okay. That tracks. And then at, uh, at early in the morning at some point, you were awoken. Is that right? Yes. And how were you awoken? Um, I heard my dad saying, Garth, uh, Garth, get up. I need help. Okay. And um, I got out of bed and ran over to help. And then when you walked into your parents' bedroom, what exactly did you observe? I observed my mother had rolled partially out of bed with her legs entangled in the sheets. And um, my instinct was, oh, she needs help. So I immediately grabbed her by the shoulders and lifted her up back into the bed. Okay. And at that point, you felt her arms were cold? Yeah, I felt she was cold and stiff. And Okay. Okay. So, in my opinion, that completely negates Chad's claim that she died in her sleep and then rolled partially out of bed. Dead bodies do not roll unless they are moved or pushed. So somebody had to move her off the bed, in my opinion. Um, and then later on, when he's being cross-examined by Lindsay Blake, he adds something to that. He says he heard a thump and then his dad knocking on the door now the thump was her hitting the floor or being moved from wherever she was killed maybe the cozy cone and yeah so it doesn't track at first he hears nothing his dad knocks on the door then he hears a thump and his dad wakes him up but no none of these uh versions explain how a dead body a corpse rolls out of bed they do not have inertia on their own and I, she was gray, and I realized she's not been breathing. Okay. Okay. And at some point between the time you got home and one o'clock, 
and the time you went to sleep at about three o'clock, did you hear anything or any indication that there was any kind of sound or struggle? I heard nothing. Okay. And would you agree that it's close enough that if there was some kind of a struggle or a fight or anything that you would have heard it? I would have definitely heard it. Were you present with the discussion with the, uh, the flams about when to have the funeral? I was. And what do you recall of that conversation? Um, I don't remember exactly what he said, but um, he said it seems pretty simple here. Um, we can have a funeral this day or this day. And Do you have a recollection of which the two choices of days? I feel like it was either Tuesday or Saturday. Okay. Now that completely uh, contradicts what uh, the um, mortician that came over from Utah said. He said that it was Chad that was rushing the funeral. So anyway, um, I'm going to go ahead and fast forward to Lindsay Blake's cross exam so you can hear the two different versions and then we'll talk about it. Yes. Did you ever share those concerns with law enforcement or the coroner or deputy coroner that showed up on the day of your mother's passing? I, I don't recall. Did you ever share those concerns with law enforcement? I wouldn't have considered uh, losing your breath to be something law enforcement would be worried about. At some point, did you learn that an autopsy was going to be conducted on your mom? Um, I did after I had learned she had been exhumed. And even with an autopsy being performed, you didn't think that it might be something law enforcement would want to know? I assume they would find it. Just the willing cognitive distance of all of Chad's children is just mind blowing. If you have concerns about your your mother's health, true concerns, why didn't you mention them? Because there were no concerns. Because she wasn't sickly. This is all made up to fit your father's narrative. Did you ever shoot paintball guns with your mom? I did not. Did you ever see her with a paintball gun? I did not. Did you ever see her with an assault rifle? I did not. Would it surprise you if Deputy Cannon said he was never shown an image of a paintball gun on October 9th of 2019? It would because he was there. I think you testified that initially when your mom came running in, you were upset. Yes. Is it fair to say you wanted to catch whoever this was that had pointed some kind of a gun at her? Yes, I wanted to catch them. When you ran outside, did you see anyone? I did not. It was so dark that I, I couldn't. Yeah, the, he could have been anywhere. And you said it was so dark that night? Um, when I went out, yes. And you were asked about the events of October 19th of 2019 from council. Do you recall that? Yes. I want to back up a little bit. Do you recall when you got home from work? It was a little after one. And what did you do when you got home from work? I pulled into the driveway, went in the house and got ready for bed and and as I said earlier, I watched YouTube for a few hours. Did you see either of your parents when you got home? Um, they were both in bed. And how did you know they were both in bed? Um, I saw their forms, their, um, their shapes in the bed as I passed by their room. Did you go in and talk to them? I did not. They were asleep. You say they were asleep, but did you actually go in the room? I assumed they were asleep. So two bodies lying in the bed. 
Yes. Anyone else in the house when you got home? It was just us. What woke you up on the morning of October 19th of 2019? I thought I heard a thump and then I heard my dad say, Garth, come help. And when you. And there it is again, a different version of what he told under direct exam. There was no thump on direct exam. There was here on cross exam, which leads me to believe that this is all a concocted story because the truth is the truth. And also dead bodies have no inertia. They have no kinetic energy. They don't fall on their own. So, yeah. Anyway, definitely also covering for his for his father. I do feel bad for him. He seems a little whipped. So I hope he is able to have a redemption arc and, you know, reconcile with his mother's family because he's going to need them. He's going to need them. They've essentially lost both parents and I understand how tragic that is. So they're going to need their mom's family. Uh, so I really hope that he comes around and comes to the truth. I really do. So that is my reaction to the key points in Garth Day Bell's testimony. I'll be back really, really soon with another video. And welcome to all the new subscribers. I welcome all your comments. Thank you so much. Until next time. Keto and Crown.